Mr. Adorno, it is our honor to be here to have a discussion with you in Athens. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you about these major developments the last years that uh, have happened in uh, neurotechnologies and what they can mean uh, for us in the future and today's societies. <clears throat> yeah, neurotechnologies have uh, a great uh, development. Some people say this is the century of the brain and uh, they are contributing to the new diagnostic uh, therapeutic procedures for neurological conditions, etc. Um, but they raise also some important ethical and legal issues because um, by means of these technologies you can have access to the brain data neural data. So for the first time in history, you can read, you can read uh, the mind, read thoughts, if you like. It's not a direct reading, but uh, some of these technologies, uh, especially functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, allow to identify the correlations between thoughts and mental uh, brain activity. Uh, the activation of some areas of the brain. So you, uh, in some way, you can know what the person is thinking. Is this accurate? Uh, I mean, we can understand what what you are thinking right now by only monitoring uh, the certain... FMRI. For the moment, it's still not, not really accurate. It's very, uh, at the very beginning in some way, so... Um, but you can identify some objects. You cannot identify a complete sentence, for instance. Uh, but you can identify if you are thinking on, of a particular object, if you are thinking yes or no, uh, or remembering something in particular. Um, there was a study uh, in the US in which the, the scientists were able to, to identify the code, the pin code, of your card, ah, but, but, so but, for numbers, for digit. Um, but, but this is a very exact information. Yeah, uh, how can they understand the digit one, two, or Yeah, three? because they ask the person, okay, now think of the first number. Okay, so they identify the part of the brain that is activated. Now the second, the third, the fourth number, okay. Um, it worked. Uh, first, of course, of course, first, um, you have to identify the patterns for, for that person. So ah. there's no, at least not for the moment, like a universal um, uh, system. Uh, you have to, to know the, it's called the, like a fin brain fingerprints, the same way that we have uh, unique uh, fingerprints or unique genetic information there is a specific, uh, unique um, uh, brain fingerprints. They're called, they're called like that. So in your case, when you think of uh, your car, your brain is activated in this way. So first you have to identify in that particular person the patterns. But if you are thinking of your car, yes. uh, then uh, it will not be the same. Uh, or the, not. The, the exact point of our brain, of your brain, right? It could be something different in your brain by thinking your car. Exactly, maybe. exactly. So it changed. So this this makes it more difficult, of course. But uh, I, I uh, read a recent study uh, with artificial intelligence combining combining results of with different persons. They could identify some uh, common common language, a common pattern. But this is again, this is still very, very, not uh, very, not accurate, of course, but uh, maybe in the long term that would be, would be possible to identify. This sounds uh, outstanding, but also very dangerous. Uh, what is uh, the, the bioethics thesis mm. about this? Yes, the, the main question is the, what is called the right to mental privacy, what I call, and uh, other people call, the right to mental privacy. So the right, because we we talk already about privacy, of course. Nobody has the right to, to invade your privacy, to know what you are doing, or 
to, to read your mails, etc. But uh, this is not only about uh, this domain. It's not only about getting information about you, but about having access to your to your brain, to your mind. And so this is really much more serious, much more serious, because it's, it's like the last uh, last frontier of your freedom. Of course. Huh? There's no, there's nothing more <laughs> after that because the uh, historically we there were I don't know uh, totalitarian regimes etc. They could put you in prison if you were uh, you disagreed with the government etc. But you still had the freedom to think what you wanted to think. So the technology even now can read our brains, as you say. Yes. Is it possible to influence our thoughts? Yes, uh, because uh, there are technologies that so not only read the brain, but also write into the brain. That's what how this is called metaphorically. You can write into the brain, which means you can modulate, mod modify, alterate some brain activities, and that those changes um, can also modify your personality, how you react. How, how, how do you think about this or that? This is also dangerous because, of course, it, uh, again, it's totalitarian. It's extremely dangerous, Mr. Latorno. <laughs> <laughs> For example, a totalitarian uh, regime, as yes. you said, yes. it, it can uh, influence the people yes. to, to do whatever one leader wants. <laughs> right? Yeah, theoretically, in the long term, but uh, not, not now. Not now, but um, um, there, there are many studies on this, okay. proving that you can change the way people think about something in particular or not in general but um, so this is why uh, i'm in favor of a specific right to protect that to protect your personality your identity uh, that cannot be altered without your cons at least without your consent i don't know if maybe even with the, with the consent i'm not sure but at least we, without your consent someone who is in prison i'm not sure that can give a free Really free consent. About this. That's uh, again. There are so many things to discuss in this domain. Very difficult matters. Uh, you are one of the most important experts in this field in the world. So I would like to to hear your your first thoughts on this concerning bioethics and maybe some new laws that yeah. we have to invent for this. Exactly. I think we need new laws in this area. We are already already uh, at the beginning. Uh, only at the beginning. Sorry. Uh, there is only Chile who intro that introduced a new article in the Constitution regarding this topic, and some some other states in the U.S. Um, but otherwise, there is nothing. Uh, UNESCO. So, but we need some global normative framework. Um, Perhaps to put limits. Common. Yes, exactly. Some co common principles, common standards. Uh, UNESCO uh, started with this took the initiative in this area. And this year uh, established a group, it's called like that, group of experts uh, in the ethics of neurotechnology. And uh, I was honored to be in that group uh, for Argentina. And they were, we were 24 people from different countries and different disciplines, lawyers, neuroscientists, philosophers. And uh, we worked during this year uh, to prepare, to write a recommendation. So it, we prepare a document, a 30-page document um, about these topics in different areas, the application of new technology. Uh, the the yeah. conclusion of your paper? No, no, it's, uh, it's very specific. It's in order to, it's very long, uh, it's difficult to, to make a summary, but basically, the recognition of the privacy of the mind, important to protect, uh, of protecting the, the mind, the thoughts, um, uh, preventing uh, discrimination based on these devices, protecting the freedom of thought, because that could be also affected if uh, others can manipulate your thoughts, uh, your freedom is limited or reduced, um, protecting your personality. So all this, I think it goes in the go good direction. Still a, a very initial document, but 
the idea is that uh, countries will be inspired on that to legislate, to adopt specific legislation. So because in the end, it's the role of the countries, each country to, to adopt laws on that. UNESCO cannot, uh, cannot, cannot enforce. legislate, cannot enforce. This is uh, like, it's called soft law, it's like soft recommendation. Law, yes. So it's like uh, principles that uh, should be followed, but they are not legally obligatory. We can only imagine how dangerous the situation could be by countries or organizations who will not respect those frameworks, <laughs> what they could do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But that happens with all uh, in all with areas us. of the okay. law. Thank you very much for You're this welcome. interesting You're discussion. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.